we're ready. In this day and age, taking pictures is as easy as opening the camera app on your phone and pressing a button, but it wasn't always as easy. Before digital photography, you had to manage your camera settings, load and unload film, film and get your pictures developed and printed. Today, taking pictures was a long process that took time, whereas today we see the results instantly. Film photography is a form of art that seems complicated, but once you're shown how, you'll be able to shoot a picture from start to finish. According to Ken Rockwell, a well-respected photographer, photographer, photography is the ability to envision a final product in your mind's eye, and then to make it so with your tools at hand. Today we'll show you how to do just that. Shooting film gives you the ability to have full control over every aspect of your pictures. It allows you to slow down and see the world as art, which can help you appreciate the beauty of things you wouldn't normally notice. As a professional photographer, I have years of experience not only shooting film myself, um, but showing others how to thrive and succeed in their film journey. Today I will show you the types of film, how to operate a camera's controls, and properly expose pictures, and a basic explanation of film development. First, let's talk about film options. There are different types of film, and they all work in different ways. Uh, the easiest type of film is black and white film, which is the cheapest and it has the most, uh, it's the most forgiving for exposure. Uh, it's easiest to learn on and you can use it in any camera. Uh, color film is the next kind, which has greater detail and more like different kinds of color tones and looks to choose from. It's more expensive and it has a shorter expiration date, but it's great for weddings, portraits, and really any other pictures depending on the stock. Now that you know more about the types of film, let's talk about how to expose your film. Shooting film usually requires you to take pictures in manual, which means you choose your own settings. There are three aspects of controlling a picture, shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO. Adjusting these controls how bright your picture is, how much detail you capture, and depth, among other things. Uh, so shutter speed is the rate that, a, that the shutter in your camera opens and closes. Uh, this helps you get greater detail, it affects the sharpness of your picture, and it affects the how bright it is. <clears throat> the faster your shutter speed, the darker your picture is, and the more detail you capture. Uh, the faster your shutter speed is, the faster objects can be captured. The next uh, aspect of photography is f-stop. f-stop controls the size of your aperture, which is a ring in your lens. Uh, if you open it up, it lets more light in and it makes your picture more blurry. And if you close it, it makes it darker because less light gets in and you capture more distance. And then the last uh, part of photography is ISO, which is the sensitivity of your film. If you have a low ASA for ISO, uh, like 50, your pictures will need more light to be exposed properly. And if you have a higher ASA, like 800, you'll need less light. Uh, these three controls interact together. If you shift one, you have to adjust the others accordingly. So you set your ASA, that's the base of your settings, and once you set it, you can't change it. If you have a fast shutter speed, you have to have a more open aperture, and vice versa. Now that you know how to expose your pictures, you need to know how to get your final result. You can choose to send your images to a professional lab or develop them at home. Developing pictures is a complicated and potentially dangerous process. It involves many steps where you run specific chemicals over the exposed film. Uh, once you load your film into a dark room, you have to put it in a special little container called a developing canister. Then you have to run developer, uh, Blix, and a stop bath. And then after that you run it with a rinse of water. And then it's uh, you can expose it to light without the pictures being affected, and you can scan your pictures. Today you learned about how to shoot and process film, and you should be able to start practicing film photography, film photography yourself. I hope you leave this speech with an understanding of the art of film photography and why film lovers shoot it so much.